is the GPO Brooklyn Portable Boom Box. Welcome to Mike's Second Toy. Well, welcome to Mike. Welcome to Mike's Second Toys. Welcome to And the thing that surprises me the most when I took this out of the box, designed in the UK. Now, although it's wonderful that it was designed over here, we don't do much of that these days when it comes to things like this. But of course, as the name suggests, you know where the inspiration is coming from. Let's get it open. Now this is looking sweet. <laughs> I like this straight away. Before we go into the actual features and get it out completely, let me just show you what else you get in the box. So you get power cables, depending on which country you are. So here's the UK one. And you get the power brick, a nice little user manual, and this little box. Now, judging by the size, I initially thought is it a free cassette? Because yes, it's literally got a cassette player in there. That's how old school this is uh, going back to. So it's a nice nod back to old school days. But then I'm a bit shocked and surprised. It's actually a battery pack, a rechargeable battery pack. Do you know what that means? It's rechargeable. How awesome is that? I have to confess, looking at this GPO Brooklyn boombox, it just takes me back. Takes me back to the old school days of ghetto blasters, break dancing, even break dance the movie, that whole hip hop era. Oh my gosh. Let's just remove these. I have got to say, absolutely loving the overall appearance of this thing. It really does throw me back, way back to the 80s and the 90s. I love the chrome effect, the gray sort of silvery effect, the black speaker grills. Let's do this. Let's have a quick look over the actual features, the externals of this boom box. So up here, you've got your classic looking FM dial but taking a closer look, it also has DAB. And this is what I mean about this being a nod back to the old school days, but then again it isn't, because it's sort of like the best of both worlds. So continuing with the visuals, you've got your tweeter, your main speaker, or if you like, woofer, of course on both sides, and then we move to these large mirrored effect dials or selectors or knobs, whatever you wanna call it. Absolutely loving the finish on these. We'll start with this one first, where you have your more classic options to start with. You've got your radio, tape, moving a bit further on in life, CD, moving even further on in life, USB, and then pretty much what we all still use today in modern equipment, Bluetooth. But if you prefer to connect your other equipment in a more traditional way, you have your auxiliary input. Which by the way, if you do want to connect other pieces of equipment to your new boombox, you can do that on the left hand side, right here on the side panel. So not only do you have your auxiliary in and out, you also have two microphone inputs. How cool is that? But it doesn't stop there. You also get your line in and a USB connection. So sticking to this side of this unit, you also have an info button because it does have a display right here. And there's also another little display here. So moving along to this switch, this is your output level on and off, which basically turns your flashing lights on and off. Now this is supposed to be some sort of meter, but we'll get to how effective this is a little later. 
Down here, we've got your balance between left and right and your volume button. And your main power switch is down here. Now moving back to the center of the unit, you have your indicator as to which mode your unit is in. Again, you will see that working in a moment. And these series of buttons right here are for your CD player, which is located on the top of the unit alongside the CD ejection button. And then right here, we've got this little button, which is your tape counter reset button. Because that little display right there is your tape counter. Awesome. Again, I'll show you that in a moment in action. Now we move down towards your cassette player. Now, those of you of a particular age will say, what? <laughs> anyway, this is your cassette player. Got all your basic functions that you would expect, like full auto stop when it comes to the end of the cassette tape. You've got your record, play, rewind, forward, stop, eject, and pause in that sort of piano style uh, function. And I am loving the fact that you've also got this metal bar surrounding your cassette player controls. I love it. Now, remember I showed you this dial a little earlier on the right hand side of the unit? Well, there's more to this dial than meets the eye. So not only is it a dial on the front section right here, it's also a dial on this rear portion that moves independently from there and as you can see it moves your FM dial whereas this section of the dial right here works along with your DAB radio which also has a menu button and as we move down you have a mode switch for your FM or DAB and you also have your treble and bass controls and right down there your headphone socket now of course this would not be a proper nod to the past if it didn't have those iconic twin FM aerials and your full-size carry handle awesome now just before I power this bad boy up let me just show you the rear of the unit where you have this very nice large GPO logo and your battery compartment now unlike the old-school ghetto blasters and boom boxes this doesn't take your D cells or C cells, it takes this battery pack that I showed you earlier. So let's get inside and see how it's connected. And as you can see, just there you have your socket where you would plug this in and then you just tuck your cables away neatly there and slot your battery pack right there. And the good thing I like about this it fits very snugly between the bottom of the unit and the top of the battery compartment right here so it doesn't rattle around and also on the back of the battery cover you've got this white section here that will also keep this in place and this socket right here to the right of the battery compartment is where you would plug in your power cable and you will also notice this red indicator because that is now charging the battery pack now I'm not gonna wait for that battery pack to charge, so it's in there still charging and that LED will change to a blue color once fully charged. So I'm gonna turn it on using the external power source and let you hear this thing in action. So right here I have some media to test this out. So I've got a cassette tape, a USB stick and a CD. Now the CD and the USB stick contains royalty free music. The cassette does not. So I'm purely going to use the cassette so that you can see it in motion so that it works. Hence the reason why I have this style of cassette tape, sort of a reel to reel style so you can see it in motion. But first things first, let's power this on. Now the first thing that came up was the FM tuner as depicted by this display right there. And that's your clock display on the other side. I won't bother setting that for this video. I'm not going to put a radio station on because I don't want a copyright hit, okay? So you'll probably just hear some static. There you go. So at least I know the FM radio works. So let me just flip it over to DAB mode. Now you may feel that this display is dim. Trust me, it's not. As I'm looking at it, it is a very vibrant display but I've got very strong studio lights on so let me just dim those lights down a bit so I can show you what I'm talking about okay lights back up 
Now, it's actually asking me, do I want to perform a full scan? Now to say yes, I just press this button. It's now doing a full scan. And then using that same dial, I can flick through whatever DAB station I choose to listen to. Okay, so let's go through the different music functions that you have on this. So we've already had the radio. We're now gonna move over to tape by using that dial right there. And as you can see, there's your LED tape counter. Now, as you can see, that actually activates the moment you put it into tape mode, even though there is no tape in the unit. But it's no big deal because as soon as you put a tape in, and when you press play, you can just hit the reset button and you're good to go. Now the next thing I would like to try is the CD player. So we just turn this dial and as you can see the indicator switches to CD and then we pop the disc in. Now watch how smooth this is. <laughs> Very nice. And notice I put it in with the mirror side facing towards you. So that's playing straight away. I'm loving these indicators right here. So right now it's sounding very flat. I'm now gonna control the bass and the treble. As you can hear, they're very nice crisp tweeters and they are real tweeters. They're not just for show, separate tweeters. Okay, let me just introduce some bass. Now what I'm going to do now, from this point onwards, I'm going to keep the studio lighting at this level so that you can appreciate all the visuals. I'm now also going to take this volume control way up to its maximum just to see if the speakers can handle it. I'm going to choose a different track and you would use these controls right here. So if I jump forward to the next track right there, turn the volume up. I'm going to take it to its full. Wow, that is loud. And the speakers handle it quite well. Let's try another track. work very well. I don't know how well you're hearing that through whatever system you're watching this video on, but you've got some very nice tops on the tweeters. I'm just gonna turn down the treble just to sort of knock the tweeters out and you can hear the difference hopefully. Definitely, definitely. You can hear the difference. Very crisp tweeters when you turn it up.
Right, the next thing I want to do is try the USB. So first, let me eject that CD. Nice. Okay, so <laughs> that seems to be working okay on the USB side of things. But what I will say, it's a little bit hit and miss regarding the USB playback. Because I don't know if you've noticed, I've got a slightly different USB sticking there now, which seems to be playing okay. The first one, it just came up with error on the screen. I tried another USB stick, that worked okay. Then I tried a different one, it came up with error. Now I'm playing this one and it seems to be playing okay. So whether that's the USB stick or it could be the limitations of this unit, I don't know. But all I know is this one seems to be playing okay. If I skip to another track, yep, and another, and another. It seems to be reading this USB stick correctly. Oh, this you crazy mother. Okay, so the next thing I want to try is the Bluetooth function. So my device has scanned for any available Bluetooth devices and as you can see, it's found the GPO Brooklyn. So I'll connect. And there you go. That noise that it made means it's a successful connection. So now I should be able to successfully play music from my device to the boom box, here we go. Awesome. And now, just to show you that I'm in complete control using my mobile device, I can turn the volume down and turn it up. And then of course you have your line in, your auxiliary line in where you can connect an array of different types of equipment, including a microphone. Now I've just taken this off one of the cameras in this little studio, so it's got a normal jack on the end right there, 3.5 millimeter jack. Let me just plug that into one of the two microphone sockets. And uh, let me just turn this mic on and straight away, you can see it's picking up my voice because you can see the output level going up and down. Now this is a very powerful sensitive microphone so it's nowhere near my mouth, but as you can see there, it's still picking up the audio. Now I'll put it closer to my mouth right there and you can hear a bit more from this. If you plug a USB stick into this unit whilst playing a CD or a cassette, you can record directly onto the USB stick. 
So imagine that you can back up all your old cassettes, all your CDs onto a USB stick. Awesome. Now, for my pros and cons, let's start with the cons first. It's Nola Sonic, okay? In terms of the audio, how loud it is and the quality, it's good enough. Don't expect it to sound anything like this JVC boombox. It will sound nowhere near this. This thing kicks out a heavy, deep bass and much more powerful. When it comes to the overall build and the quality and the feel of the controls, there is a little give in each of these knobs right here. But don't let that put you off. It's only a slight give and the controls still feel very nice, smooth and firm. Another thing that I found, which almost made it a little bit gimmicky, but it still works, is that your output level meters right here, although they are real, they do work, it's not just randomly going up and down, they're too sensitive. The slightest audio noise from whatever original recordings you've got playing through this will slam these meters up to the top. So they could be a little less sensitive. And as I alluded to earlier, although it may not be a fault of this system, it was hit and miss with various USB sticks. And another con for me, which is kind of 50% con and 50% pro. The pro is, it's got a rechargeable battery pack. How cool is that? The con is, it's a battery pack that we're expecting too much from. That one battery pack has to power this entire unit with all of its amazing functions. So it really doesn't last that long. On paper, I believe it should last you up to four hours, but apparently if you leave that battery pack in and your unit is off, you will get a percentage of battery drain. So now let me get on to the positives and trust me when I say this, there's a lot because I purchased this. Now in the UK, I got this for about, just shy of about 230 pounds. I believe in America, you're looking at similar prices in dollars. But having said that, this one has DAB. So this is where all the pros come in because not all of these have DAB. Now I'm led to believe that DAB is more of a bigger thing in the UK or Europe than it is in the States. If I'm incorrect, please let me know down in the video description, but I have seen American owners of this unit where it says FM and AM. On this version, it's FM and DAB. So for me, that's a real pro, because I'm into my DAB, but however, if you're looking for that old school vibe, that other version that has FM and AM is more true to the cause. So to me, that's also a pro, although who listens to AM anymore? However, again, it's supposed to be a nod towards the old school. Another pro for me, and again, that's nodding towards the old school meets new school. I love that it has that retro look about it but it's packed full of more modern features like your Bluetooth and your USB. Another pro for me is that I love that they have included an actual cassette tape player and recorder because sometimes when you look at some of these big ghetto blasters slash boom boxes that try to emulate the old school ghetto blasters, they do away with your tape player and they just put like an iPod dock or an iPhone dock, but not this one. And I love that. Another pro for me, and this is a huge one, no matter what criticisms you have of this boombox, no matter what you don't like about it, the fact that you can back up all your old tapes and CDs onto USB with this unit is good enough, or should I say is a good enough reason to buy this unit. And to conclude, the biggest pro for me Oh my gosh, they're starting to make ghetto blasters that look like old school ghetto blasters for the new age. So this is introducing this style of old school boom boxes to the younger folk whilst making the older folk of a particular age happy 
and nostalgic again. So there you go, people. That was the GPO Brooklyn Portable Boombox. Check the video description for more info and you'll see a link for more product information on the GPO website. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on Mike's Tech and Toys.